Hey everybody, it's Mr. Cogshell here. Um, I think this is our first video together for our 7th graders, so hello there. Um, so today in our 7th grade science class, we were talking about what is science exactly and just kind of getting a gauge on what everybody thinks. So right here, I have this Google form that everybody should have taken. Um, and again, it's not for a grade, but we're just looking at uh, what's everybody think science is. So anyways, if we start off, we start looking at science is primarily a search for truth. Okay, so a truth can mean a lot of different things to people. Um, and I also, this option one and agree, they're the same option. I just had to go back and change option one to agree. So if it's orange and blue, you know, uh, they mean the same thing. So most of us thought that science is primarily a search for truth. Um, I happen to agree with that, but I know a lot of people, if we're talking about religion, searching for an absolute truth of why we're hearing things like that, science really doesn't deal with uh, that sort of kind of understanding of the supernatural world where it only deals with the natural world. And what I mean uh, by the natural world is I'm talking about our universe, okay? Not necessarily necessarily just here on Earth, but if something is true here, then it should be true anywhere else in the universe, hundreds of millions of light years away from here, okay? So science can be sol can solve many problems or any problem, or answer any question. Um, again, not if it stays to the natural world. Uh, most certainly it can. But if we're talking about those supernatural, that supernatural world where we're talking about uh, religion or, uh, you know, some people talk of think ghosts are real and things like that. Um, again, it's not that science is here to prove it or disprove it is it's just not in the same field where we cannot overlap those two fields. Okay. Um, engineering can solve any problem again in the natural world. And I'm just going to kind of scroll through these guys and I might stop through on one or two. Uh, science is primarily concerned with understanding how the natural world works. And so that's the biggest one is understanding, right? So there's another one later on that talks about science is primarily a collection of facts or we just want to, we just want to know facts. Uh, but that's not necessarily true. Sure. Science is about gaining knowledge, um, and facts and things like that, but it really, it's a process of understanding, right? It's really about a process of we have a problem here or we have an unknown and we want to get to uh, the result. We want to get to, uh, we want to solve that problem. So how can we do that? And that's why engineering is brought up so much is because engineers, they're the guys who solve problems, building a bridge, uh, building uh, roads, building tunnels and things like that and some incredible landscapes and they need to be great problem solvers. So anyways, they kind of build off of knowledge from people who have built roads before them. They take what they did well and they take what they didn't do so well and they try to get it even better and try to perfect that. Okay. So we'll just keep on rolling here. Astrology. Here's another good one. Astrology is predicting your future from the arrangement of the stars and the planets. Is that science? 80% of us said, yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. So astrology is, uh, you know, it's like walking into one of those tents where somebody has a, a, an orb and they say they can predict your future. Somebody's reading your palms and by the creases in the palms, they can tell that your life in 10 years, you're going to be a millionaire or something like that. You should never trust anybody like that. There's no way that's possible. Okay, and it, it can be proven by science if it is possible. So that's not science. Okay, we have to have evidence. We have to have hard proof. We have to be able to sense it with our five senses. You know, taste, feel, sm smell, touch, and the other guys. Okay, and that kind of goes, I guess, uh, in the supernatural world. So I shouldn't, shouldn't say it's not real, but I'm just saying that's in the supernatural realm where we don't uh, go over that. Uh, science requires a lot of creativity. Yes, there's some creative engineers out there who come up with some creative ways to build these crazy buildings or skyscrapers that we're building today or, you know, crazy bridges and, and tunnels and things like that or just the technology that is around anymore and robotics and stuff. Stipic uh, science typically provides only temporary answers to questions. Uh, not really. So science, we try to find a real answer, right? An answer that stands the test of time. Uh, en engineers can design anything they want, however they want. Uh, not necessarily true, right? They can design a lot of things, but if we don't have the materials, if we don't have the knowledge to build this stuff yet, we, uh, they can't build it.
Okay. Again, here it is. It's mostly concerned with science is mostly concerned with the collection of facts. No, that's not their primary concern. The primary concern is problem solving that thought process of I have a problem. Uh, how do I identify that problem? And then how do I come up with a plan to deal with that problem and see how we can fix it? Right. We'll keep on moving on here. Anytime you ask a question, you are doing science. Uh, agree with this, okay? So even like you watch a small child, a toddler, or things like that, they're exploring the world all of the time. So uh, you could definitely say that there are like many scientists, okay? So that video, I don't know if you've watched Neil deGrasse Tyson, but he uses that um, idea of a kid always turning over rocks, seeing what's going on. Or you guys have seen little kids, you know, they're, you can't leave them on the ground for too long or else they're going to pick up things off the floor and put it in their mouth because kids are always hungry. So they want to see what's edible, right? And so they don't know any better. So, or they might, uh, you're holding them and they'll squeeze your face or something and they'll pinch you and they don't know, right? They're just trying to figure out how this world works, okay? So that's at the most basic level. That's what scientists do, right? Little infants. And then real scientists and engineers and guys like that, they bump it up tenfold. We'll keep on moving. Most engineers and medical doctors are actually scientists, uh, somewhat sort of, um, right? If you're just going to go see your regular family, family doctor, they may give you some medicine to uh, help you with your nausea or your headache or you have an, a knee ache, but they're not really in the laboratory um, figuring out cures for rare diseases and things like that. A scientific fact is absolute fixed permit. No. In the science world, we don't say that anything is permanent or anything is absolute because science, we're always finding out new things. Okay. We're always able to dive in deeper and we find actually more questions than we do answers. All science is good science. I would disagree with that statement. Uh, there's scientists out there. They're human beings. We're all human beings and we all tend to make mistakes. Some of the greatest moments in history have been made possible by engineering. Sure. We put a man on the moon, right? Flight. Uh, the invention of the internet, cell phones, things like that. Scientific theory is merely a guess. No, 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 no. It's uh, it's a collection of ideas, okay? A collection of laws that we know to be true that try to explain something, a big picture that maybe we don't know for a fact, but it helps us explain what happened. Like, how did the world get here? How did Earth get here? How did the universe get here? Uh, things like that. Scientists have solved most of the major mysteries of nature. No, we come up with more questions than we do answers as we study. Scientists can study and explain events that happened millions of years ago. Sure, let's talk about the dinosaurs, right? Uh, knowledge of what science can and cannot do and how it works is important to all people. Yeah, you don't have to be an incredible scientist, but you at least need to have a baseline level, right? You don't want to have somebody come by and tell you that... Um, if you have a stone and the stone will heal all of your illnesses that you have, your ailments, or like, I don't know, I used to collect Buckeyes when I was a kid because Buckeyes are always said to be lucky, right? Uh, that's not science. Uh, we can't, we can't really, you know, we can't study luck. Okay. It's things like that. <clears throat> so you need to have that scientific knowledge to be able to question somebody. Why is this going to, heal my ailment and things like that. Ask, learn to ask the right questions so you don't get hoodwinked or something. Anything done scientifically is always accurate and reliable. That goes back to scientists are all human beings, right? It's not always accurate and reliable because there are scientists out there that uh, they make mistakes or maybe they're just not the best scientists. Maybe they have other intentions in mind. Scientists often Try to test or disprove possible explanation. Yes, agree big time on this. In order to prove something to be truthful or to be factual, if you try to disprove it and you can't disprove it, that must mean there's some validity to it, right? It's valid or it's truthful, okay? Perpetual motion machines are a fact, okay? So perpetual motion machines, you'll have to Google these, um, but uh, they're just a motion machine that essentially if you just give it a push, then it will forever spin because it's made in such a way that uh, it keeps this mi this machine spinning. So that's not true. That's really not all that important to this. All scientific problems must be studied with the scientific method. Uh, it's good practice to use the scientific method. It's almost like an ingredient sheet, right? Or how to make a good recipe. Okay. If you do it the same way, the exact same time, you should get the same loaf of bread or the same pizza that you make because you use the same ingredients and you use the same method every single time, right? 
But if you skip a step or two or you don't cook it long enough or you do something different in that recipe, then your pizza will taste different because you did it differently, okay? And the same thing with the scientific method. Disagreement between scientists is a weakness. No, that's a strong point. Like, again, like I said, again, we need people out there that disagree and they try to disprove it. And if, like I said, if they can't disprove it, that means that it is truthful. If they do disprove it, then we know that we need to go back and we made a mistake somewhere. Engineers are inventor. Yes, most certainly they can be. They don't have to be. Engineering does not involve creativity. It involves a lot of creativity. Technology draws on science and contributes to it. Sure. We'll talk about the hammer, right? The hammer is a primitive tool, a primitive technology. And uh, we've built off of that. We built homes off of it, these structures. And now we're able to build skyscrapers where we hardly use maybe a hammer on a skyscraper. Right. But it's been built off of that or uh, <clears throat> the knowledge of electronics have now given us a little itty bitty cell phone that we can put in our pocket. Uh, same question there. Technology provides the eyes and the ears. Yeah, we have technology that uh, are instruments that are able to detect things that we can't see. Right. Uh, there's ultraviolet radiation out there. We can't see ultraviolet radiation with our eyes, but we can detect it, right? If you stay out in the sun too long, that ultraviolet radiation hurts our skin and it, it can give us melanoma and things like that. But we have uh, instruments that can detect that, okay? And many, many other things. Hypothesis is just an educated guess. Uh, no, it is not. And we'll get into that next week more so. Technologies have, new technologies have new side effects. They sure do, just like medicines, right? Engineering always provides the right solution. Nah, not always. Engineering only provides tools for science. Not only, but it does provide a lot of tools for science. But then most of the time, science helps us in our daily lives. Scientists have observed nature apparently follows the rules throughout the universe. Exactly. That's what we're trying to find is if it's truthful, it's a law. If it's a rule, then it must, if it's true here, then it must be true anywhere else in our universe. Engineering is an applied science. It's, it is proving a hypothesis is proving a hypothesis is correct makes a study valid. Not all the time. Okay, if you disprove it, it's not like you failed at that experiment. You're finding out new information, and that's really what science is all about: is is getting to the bottom of if I do this over and over again, and I do it the exact same way, and I come out with the same result, then that's what I get. Right? It's not whether I'm right or wrong. It's just figuring out what is right what is correct science proves ideas it can also disprove ideas so i would disagree with that one all right guys uh this should help you this video should help you with your card game if you have not turned that in you guys can just go ahead and make a word document have two columns one column is what is science the other one is what is what science is not and then you're going to use that word bank kind of that i gave you and you're going to put them correctly in the correct order of both columns and then go ahead and drop that into teams um if you guys ever have any questions make sure you guys get a hold of me email me always be in constant contact all right have a good one